Hi, my name is Lady Cardi, and thank you for tuning in to the Community Forum. Uh, we have a very uh, unique guest to the set today. His name is Justin Spring. He's a poet, a video maker from Sarasota, and he's the founder of Soul Speak, which is a nonprofit organization that's dedicated to uh, healing and the arts. So, everyone, welcome Justin Spring to the set. Thanks for having me. It's very nice of Tampa. You know, we don't have anything like this in Sarasota. It's supposed to be a big arts town, but they get a zero for oh. not having the kind of public access that you have in Tampa for the arts. It's oh, wow. I think <laughs> Tampa's like the last place where we can do free speech. It's, it's, it's a, a diamond in a sea of mud, you know, believe mm -hmm. me. You know, so, in fact, I really appreciate getting up here to, to talk to you and to get on the airwaves. You know? well, we thank you for coming here. I think what you, your organization, so to speak, and I, I really want to touch on that because I think that's a mm -hmm. very um, unique uh, therapeutic program that you're doing, but so to speak, where, where, where did you get the inspiration to do that and, and um, how did you come about starting that? Yeah, let me, you know, like everything I've done, I've never planned anything in my life, including mm -hmm. my two marriages, nor my two divorces. They just happened, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's, that's in terms of my education, my career, everything has just happened right. to me. I've just followed my nose okay. or my heart or my instincts. In, in uh, 1989, I formed something called the Sarasota Poets, in which I included poets from Tampa, some very good poets here. Mm -hmm. uh, and we started to tour the country because I said, let's go out and you show them the kind of poetry that we have here. And then I decided after a couple of years of that, it, it's rough trying okay. to find venues, you know that, you know, it's not the most popular art in the world, poetry, right. you know. Then I said, well, why don't we just go back to Sarasota? That's a vacation town. People come there. We'll, we'll form a theater there, and we'll invite the poets to that who are around the neighborhood, and people will come because they come to Sarasota to vacation. So that's what we did. And we included mimes. We had uh, singers. We had dancers. We okay. had actors, wow. all to make the poetry come alive. It was right. highly popular, highly okay. popular. But I didn't like it after a while. I felt it was still too wooden. I wanted something that was immediate, you know. I wanted okay. uh, the audience to feel what I felt when a poem comes to me. Mm -hmm. It's that moment of rising, of the beautiful moment, and just heaven blazing into the head, and the poem forms, and it just comes all by itself, you know. So myself and uh, a few other poets started to try to figure out how poets did that, just spoke a poem before we learned to read and write. There are no books on it. They're kind of academic books, but no mm -hmm. how-to books. We want to know right, how right. do you do it? How do you, when a poem comes to you, how do you speak it out, right. you know, without losing it, you know? It took us about a year to figure it out, and then we started to record them, and we call those poems Soul Speak because they seem to come from the deepest part of ourselves. We never knew what they were going to be, like okay. dreams. You have no idea what your dreams will be in the night. Mm -hmm. we, had, we had no idea. We knew that something wanted to come up. And we learned if you simply surrendered to it and put down all your defenses, forgot what poetry was, you know, all its convolutions that we have today in writing, and you allowed a story to form the, because the soul or the unconscious only speaks in stories. That's why our dreams are in stories, our daydreams mm -hmm. are in stories. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you a story now. Right. We, we okay. can't stop telling stories, right, okay? Right. And if we forget everything we knew about poetry, that in fact a poem would form. And it would form with two people as well, with one person speaking it and another person adding to it. Without thinking, it's a no-brainer, so to speak. You have to turn off your thinking mind, your critical okay. mind. How do I do this mind? And what happens is the genius within us will form that poem with one or two people. Two people is easier. I then found out when it, when, it, when it finally hit me how simple it was, you simply had to surrender to it, like you surrender to your dreams mm -hmm. because you're asleep. Right. That's, that, that's the act that allows you to dream. Yeah. But you can do it also when you're awake. And you, you, you have to want it to happen when you feel that urge for something that's kind of growing inside you. So it sounds more like a spiritual type it, of it's, hi, it, it's highly spiritual. It's the way the original poetry was... Poetry and prayer were one and the same. We're okay. going back to tribal days, okay? Poetry, and this poetry comes from that gene set in us, whatever it is. It's in our bloodstream, so mm -hmm. to speak. And I found a way to then show anybody how to do it. I don't care whether they're 8 years old or 80, whether they're uh, all kinds of mental and emotional conditions, right. people in deep therapy. It allowed them to form poems and form poems together with a partner so they had somebody okay. with them on that journey, on that story of how they're feeling or what's happening to them okay. today. So that's what... Then we changed Sarasota Poetry Theater to Soul Speak okay. because we, we saw that, that, in fact, 
not only was the poetry that we were speaking alive, mm -hmm. you know, we could feel it, uh, but we could show it to anybody and teach it to anybody, and all they had to do was want to learn it. And have, is, that, is that where the actual therapy, heal, the healing therapy program came from? Right, right. It came from us doing it and seeing what happened to our lives. I was a kind of manic depressive. I was up and down. I'd stay in bed for three or four days, you know, wow. and up like a, you know. Okay. You know, that swing, you know. Mm -hmm. And, in fact, the two poets who, were, who in fact, were doing it with me were also like that. And what we noticed after a while, because we did so much of this, mm -hmm. is that our personalities leveled out. Wow. Okay. okay. And, and, in fact, we could only attribute that it had stayed level, mm -hmm. okay, is that it was because we were allowing the deepest part of ourselves to speak the way we've spoken for or, or sung or moved mm -hmm. to for tens of thousands of years. Poetry goes back tens of thousands of years, not just back to about a thousand BC when we learned to read and write as a human race, but way back before mm -hmm. poetry was being done, similar to soul speak. No script, no writing, no changing. It just okay. came out of people, okay? So, so I guess the, the, mo the best part of the whole is, I guess what attributes to the therapeutic type feeling is uh, maybe there's an inner voice that hasn't been heard yet. Correctly. That now you're allowing to express what you really feel about. Your you know, deepest, certain. most essential self, which comes up to you in dreams. We very seldom allow it today in our conscious lives to come up. You as an artist know that you allow it to come up when you compose, you know. Mm -hmm. But most people in their everyday walk of life never experience that except when they dream. But what it allows our deepest, most essential self to come up, and when that speaks, it brings together the unconscious part of us and the conscious part of us. It makes us totally human again. Okay. Rather than just trying to think our way through life, you want to think and feel your way through life, right? Right, right. And you have to keep bringing it together. And what happens is that you, when you do that, you don't have what you call neurosis, which is the conscious life is trying to be a big shot, and the unconscious life wants to be a dancer. Right, right, right. Okay? okay. So bonds, okay. you okay. know, you have to bring them together in okay. some way, whatever is going on in deeply inside you. So it allows everybody to do that. And we have worked in, let me give you an example of how really difficult those populations can be. I've worked for three years with women who had been physically and sexually abused by okay. their families. And it, they were basically split personalities, and okay. they couldn't really function in the world because if somebody said something cross to them or corrected, they would go to pieces. They right. would become 11-year-old right. or whatever it was, you know. It's very difficult to treat in modern psychiatry. They don't really know how to treat these people, you right. know, be, be, because they're dissolved in those. When we allow those voices to speak up with soul speak, to come up through them and to speak and to do it together, so two women, women all lived alone health places, you know, they started to speak up and they found for the first time they had a friend. And what was speaking was not their conscious minds, which is where the therapist wanted to go, but their unconscious minds. And what the soul wanted to speak about is what's happening to me now. Okay. I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to live a life. I'm going to do it, you know. I'm so alone. Will anybody help me? You know, so those, that's poems come out. And the person who was responding to them, adding to that poem, was in the same boat. For the first time in their life, you can feel the help you're getting from somebody who's right, responding. Right, it's like right. a friend. You know the real friends, okay? Right. This is a friend in the same boat. And that act, believe it or not, that the poetry act was the first therapy. Okay. That's why it kept people on an even balance way before we had any kind of formal medicine, you know? It brings the two halves of us together and brings people together, okay? Because it's done as a group, you know? Two people is a small group, but right, two is right. a family, you know? Right, Like the souls speak when you're balancing things off of each other. It's almost like... Everybody has, you know, everybody's on different journeys, but everybody has experienced certain, the same things at one time. So exactly, like at the everyone, core level. Right, so it, I guess it kind of, yeah, brings everybody to the same level. It's like, okay, you know, I'm not way out here. You know, we're all, you know, this, we have the same type of feeling. Like Forrest Gump says, I right. know what love is. Right. Right, I, the very touching moment when he explains to the girl, mm -hmm. I may be slow, mm -hmm. but I know what love is. Right, right. And we all know what love is on a deep level, but we don't know how to express it or sadness. We've all been to a sad, a lonely piece, a baffled piece, a confused piece. Mm -hmm. It's all the same across the human race. Mm -hmm. Slightly different flavors, but the confusion is recognized by everybody and the love and the happiness, you know. So that's what joins in that level, not the okay. conscious overlay okay. level of, you know. So, uh, so would you say um, that this may be, um, is a way for people to connect with because you were saying you know on one level it's like there there's a disconnect 
There is. So maybe with this therapy, it really brings you to who you really are or helps you find out, you know, your destiny and who you, you know, that voice on the inside wants.